My name is Arturo Mireles and I am presenting my mini ethnography project on the Dutch hemp farm industry. The subject has a great level of passion for me as I have been documenting the American hemp industry, but I will be focused on comparing the Dutch hemp farm industry to itself and there will be a lot of similarities and differences that were found. But first, what exactly is hemp? Hemp is cannabis L has less than 2% THC to comply with European law and has a multitude of uses. It can be used for textiles, paper, building material, plastics, fuel, and feed. The vast possibilities with hemp are still yet to be known because of the division within the hemp industry in the Netherlands. Due to the legality of marijuana within the Netherlands, there are stigmas that bleed into the hemp industry and that is a hard line that is not to be crossed by hemp producers. Hemp is constantly conflated as marijuana which can be a challenge in the industry as a whole. The two leading hemp producers within the Netherlands are Donagro with 26,000 hectares for hemp production and hemp flax with a total of 1,500 hectares for hemp production. June 13, 2019, upon arrival to Hemp Flax, we were seemingly unscheduled because the facilitator to our class resigned a week prior. Once settled, we congregated at the boardroom and had a quick class and a swift tour through the facility by Annalika DeHart, the Hemp Flax plant manager. She gave us the history of the company as well as provided insight to the struggles of the industry. In 1993, first growing 1994, uh, yeah, 1997 we had the first patent for the mowing machine. Uh, in 2003 we took over a, a company in Germany. Um, yeah, because that, in that period, beginning of the 2000s till 2008, it was a really difficult time. Also for the comp competition, so a lot of companies just fall. We were able to get some nice machinery. Uh, yeah, but it was also very difficult for us. So we had 2004, 2008 really refocus on what should we do. And in, in, in 2008, 9, I think uh, Mark Reinders joined, uh, our current CEO. And he was also assigned with the assignment, okay, you can try once more to make this work, and otherwise we just stop. Hemflex has been a front runner of the hemp industry by authoring processes that are accepted by the International Standards Organization. By creating these standards and certifications, hemp flax has wrote their way into history because they are contributing to the hemp industry. In 2011, we, uh, we had our first ISO certification because we were supplying to the automotive industry. We were making all these kinds of door panels on, on the wall. Uh, so we were supplying the bulk fiber. Now you have to have a consistent way of producing and making sure that products that you produce are uh, satisfactory for, for, the, for the customers. So we say, okay, we get an ISO 9001 uh, um, certification where we enhance uh, customer satisfaction. Yeah. The leader of the hemp industry in the Netherlands towers over hemp flax in terms of land used for hemp production. Donagro is the giant of the industry by investing 26,000 hectares of farmland in the Netherlands. On the 14th and 17th of June 2019, upon arrival, our group was welcomed and housed within the first hemp building for a presentation by Albert Dunn, the majority owner to Donagro. We had an extensive interview the first day, an extensive tour of their facility the next. The level of willingness and transparency made for a detailed experience with any questions. Albert Dunn has been a contributor to the hemp industry by being a board member to the European Hemp Industry Association and by remaining on the board he provides representation of the Netherlands. His massive land acquisition placed him in a powerful position within the Netherlands hemp industry. Yeah, the, that's the European Industrial Hemp Association. That's founded in 1995. I was with it in the, from the beginning, uh, but it's mostly controlled still at the moment by marijuana. 
and that's so I'm there, but m more in the background because yeah, I people who want to smoke marijuana, they must do it, but I don't want to be involved in this kind of thing. So and we are only focused on the industrial or healthcare now for CBD, and you know it's on the stock market. Uh, a crazy thing at the moment, people invest a lot, only in marijuana companies and not in the total plants companies. So, and I prefer to talk about a total business for the whole plant. So using the whole plant as a product and not only the money. And you need the money for the rest because it's a yeah, whole crop who make it uh, profitable. And when we don't pay the farmers enough, the farmers will not grow it anymore. Mr. Dunn holds a deep resentment for hemp flax and their former business relationship. Albert also criticizes the standards set by hemp flax for the International Standards Organization, as he claims he holds higher standards for his facility and products, as well as processes. Yeah, you know, two companies, Hempflex and Bafa, make a standard, European standard for the hemp. But I don't call it a standard. Because when I, using our standards, our standards are much higher level than they are. They're using old fashioned machines, uh, not new technologies. Uh, but, you know, everybody wants to make European standards but they do it all on their own way so and it's not a the standard they have now is not a not a normal standard and you know how it works when you have a standard but the other one is priced without a standard is much lower they buy this hemp flax is expanding into other nations while Dunagro is heavily invested in remaining local entrepreneurship with both companies is very apparent but members within hemp flax are expanding out of the Netherlands as well as out of the hemp sector. Dun Agro is a more traditional agricultural producer as it is a family legacy that has been passed down to the fourth generation now. Hemp flax did not mention the past membership with Dun Agro but instead focused on the innovation as well as the influence of the hemp sector. Research and development within the hemp harvest is focused with Dunagro, while research and development for hemp application is emphasized with hemp flax. So we had a lot of competition from the agricultural part, um, and we said, okay, how, how we, we don't have we don't own this, this these fields. It's all contracting with farmers, and we said, okay, we have a little bit too much competition um, that could endanger. The, the availability of biomass for, for this, pro, for this uh, processing plant and also for the customers in the end. So we have to think of a plan B. And also you have to address the, 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 the risk factor of the weather. Because yeah, you can do a lot, but when it's raining, it's raining. You cannot stop it. And when it's not raining, yeah. So you're always a little bit dependent on the, on the, on the climate and the, the weather conditions. So we say, okay, it's a good plan to have a, a different site as well in case there is a bad period here and we are able to get some nice material from there. Both companies are within kilometers of each other and are leading hemp producers within the Netherlands. They share the same views of the implausibility of hemp replacing the petrol industry as well as being able to visually distinguish the hemp plant and the cannabis plant. But the differences are what set each company apart. While Albert is playing it safe by not expanding into anything related to cannabis, he continually learned to understand the value of the plant by being open for expansion into the CBD sector. Although Hempflex may not have the hectare that Dunagro has, their ability to expand into the cannabis market while averting authorities may be how the company has remained relevant within the hemp sector. The differences of both producers lies in a need to compete where each other lacks. 
although innovation is being driven forward for hemp, the petroleum sector remains unchallenged by both leading hemp farmers in the Netherlands.